Hello and welcome to the Analog Devices Precision Digital Isolation Technology Training videos on the fundamentals of isolated gate drivers. This video is the third in the series and will focus on trade-offs of timing, CMTI and EMI for gate drivers. We will discuss these differentiators and how balance gate driver choice affects the needs of the application. The first metrics we will discuss are the timing metrics. These include propagation delay, skew and pulse width distortion, or these metrics affect the system response and control. A propagation delay, TD, is the most basic timing parameter and it is stated as the time it takes an input edge to get to the output. It is defined for the rising transition denoted as TDLH, which indicates time delay for low to high. This spec is usually defined as the time between the input reaching the threshold for high signal, VIH, to the output rising to 10% of its final value. For the falling transition, this is separately shown as TDHL, which denotes time delay for high to low. This spec is usually defined as the time between the input reaching the threshold for low signal, VIL, to the output dropping below 90% of its high value. Both TDHL and TDLH times could be different for a part, and either of these may be defined as the time between 50% of the final value on the input to 50% of the value on the output. The prop delay numbers should be low, so the reporting for signalling of overcurrent or error status and subsequent response is fast. This means IGBTs with shorter withstand times can be used in an application and allows for smaller IGBTs, which can save on system space and cost. Propagation delay skew, T skew, is the difference between edges of two different channels reacting to the same input and operating conditions. Skew may be defined as per part for dual channel parts or part to part for single channel parts. Pulse width distortion, PWD, is the difference between rising and falling delays, usually on a single part, and is given as TPD rising minus TPD falling. Some manufacturers aren't specifying skew. So, some designers are incorrectly using PWD as the SKU number, thus comparing two very different metrics. When considering non-isolated gate drivers, if an external isolator is used, add that time as well. Theoretically, prop delay and PWD can be compensated in a controller, but SKU cannot. Low propagation delay skew provides several desirable benefits. To prevent both power switches from being on at the same time, blanking or dead time must be inserted into the pulse width modulator, PWM. The goal is to have no shoot through and the shortest dead time as possible. Although it's tempting to set dead time based on min-max prop delay across all conditions, this may leave some performance unused. Hence, we need to consider the prop delay skew number, which then determines the required dead time. A smaller skew allows a much tighter dead time to be set. Tighter dead time decreases motor current distortion and torque ripple, resulting in smoother motor operation and reduced bearing or coupling wear. Additionally, tighter dead time improves energy efficiency. 
Hence, for optimum efficiency, low skew is desirable. Common Mode Transient Immunity, CMTI, is the ability of an isolated gate driver to withstand fast transitions across the isolation barrier. It is the level of transients across the barrier, with no errors in the system, and is given in units of kilovolts per microsecond, or volts per nanosecond. In half bridges, the ground of the high side gate driver moves in sync with the midpoint voltage of the half bridge. The converter switching action charges and discharges the parasitic capacitance, C ISO, across the isolation barrier. C ISO charging current is the common mode charging current defined as ICM. The charging current is equal to the product of C ISO and the slew rate at the switch node. The slew rate depends on the bus voltage divided by rise or fall time. ICM flows through the isolator and can overload the isolator transmitter or receiver. This current flow may result in the following issues. Timing jitter, which may change propagation delay beyond the allowable bounds as per spec in the data sheet. Transmission errors, such as static errors when the input is not switching and the output is held either high or low. There could also be dynamic errors present during switching. Finally, we may have isolator damage. The slew rate is dependent on two quantities, the bus voltage and the timing, which is the rise or fall time of the switching node. Thus, for reliable performance, high CMTI is required. Power converters inherently generate common mode transients. SIC and GAN systems may have common mode transients between 50 to 200 kV per microsecond. CMTI is signal integrity spec and gives a measure of disturbance rejection. As discussed before, CMTI failure may result in timing jitter, which changes propagation delay. Such propagation delay variation can reduce the converter's efficiency and or distort the output. But the bigger impact of transmission errors is shoot-through, such that the complementary device in a half-bridge configuration may turn on, leading to converter failure. This damage can be catastrophic. Let's look at an example shown here. The competitor part shows various error signatures at large and fast transients. Using such a part in the system may not be suitable in a SIC or GAN system which has fast transients. In fairness, the failure signature is obtained above the rated CMTI of the part as per data sheet. In comparison to the performance of the competitor, the ADI part is able to reliably operate without any glitch at the same transient level as the competitor part. The transients shown in the figure are at a spec higher than quoted in the data sheet. A gate driver's high CMTI means better converter performance for SICK and GAN. Another important factor affecting system performance is electromagnetic compatibility, EMC, and measures are taken at the design level to minimize emissions. The techniques employed may be frequency spread spectrum and are transformer coil structure and placement. Radiated emissions are also caused by the harmonics of the switching frequency in the converter. Switching frequency affects semiconductor switching losses as well, 
The switching loss is also dependent on the switching transitions themselves. At the application level, there are ways to affect the radiated emissions while performing a trade-off between switching losses and emissions. Various operating conditions pose different issues. A light load appears most challenging for emissions, while switching losses are most significant at full load. Some designers looking to use faster switches in new designs need to consider that faster switching transitions will lead to reduced switching loss, and thus a smaller heatsink is required. However, this also leads to increased EMI problems, and the system will require a larger EMI filter to keep the radiated emissions within limits, thus the design trade-off. Using higher gate drive impedance reduces emissions while slowing the device operation. On the other hand, lower gate drive impedance results in faster switching, which minimizes losses. Analog Devices has many digital isolators that provide trusted safety and data integrity. To learn more, please watch the next in our Precision Digital Isolation video training series on the fundamentals of isolated gate drivers. Click on the link below or visit analog.com slash iCoupler.